Hi everyone, welcome to Anaket Me Neat English. I'm your biology educator Ambika Sharma and today I am going to make a very difficult topic, very easy for you and that is electron transport chain and that too in less than 10 minutes. I have seen students struggling in this particular concept. They are not able to understand that how that protons are moving, what is happening. So basically today I am going to divide this topic into few parts so that you can understand it in a better way. If I talk about the electron transport chain, yes, it is a very interesting topic and yeah it's a little difficult one for you people because uh, you are not able to understand that how that movement is right how that protons are moving so I will tell you in this particular video I will explain it uh, in a very simple way right that will be up to mark and that will help you to score the marks from this particular topic in your NEET examination okay so uh, let's start the electron transport chain the very first thing that we know is this diagram which is given in NCRT when you talk about the electron transport chain you know that this electron transport chain it will be there in the inner membrane of mitochondria where are you going to see it in the inner membrane of mitochondria isn't it isn't it so students you know that during the glycolysis during the crab cycle right this NADH2 it forms FADH2 it forms so the electrons from them they will transfer right they will finally they have to reach to the terminal acceptor the final acceptor and that is your oxygen so when oxygen will accept it right the ATP formation will be there now how this process will take place basically these NADH2 FADH2 they are having the electrons they will pass their electrons you know that electrons are having very high energy so when these electrons in the inner membrane of mitochondria when they will move from one complex to another from uh, one complex to another so what's going to happen because they will start their movement with very high energy by the end they will have less energy so basically this energy will be used for the ATP formation that is how it works moreover you are going to take talk about the oxidation reduction potential in this right oxidation reduction potential the same thing we discuss in the Z scheme also right now when it comes to the oxidation reduction potential or you can say that your redox potential right bache. so basically what is happening here first of all you should know about the complexes what you need to know you need to know about the complexes so when it comes to complexes especially in the electron transport chain complex 1 2 3 and 4 is there yes in electron transport chain there are four complexes when you talk about the fifth complex it is basically the part of oxidative decarboxylation oxy sorry oxidative phosphorylation that is due to this oxidation right the phosphate is added and the atp is formed so the trick here is basically it's nadi sakdi cyto cyto to reducto oxido this is how i remember right nadi suicide uh, the cyto 2 reducto, ox uh, reducto oxi oxido that is how I remember now what's the meaning of this your complex one is NADH dehydrogenase right it is NADH dehydrogenase complex 2 is your succinate dehydrogenase complex 3 is your cyto 2 means two times you have to remember cytochrome here cytochrome here that's what you have to remember so this is cytochrome C then cyto2 means two times cytochrome so it is reducto oxidase means this one is cytochrome c reductase this one is cytochrome c oxidase these are the name of the complexes right students these are the name of the complexes so cytochrome c reductase is also known as cytochrome bc1 complex that's what you have to remember so you can answer one question in your neat examination from these complexes itself fifth complex is your elementary particle it is your atp synthase through which protons will pass and ATP will form I hope up to this part everything is clear now there is a route of electron transport ultimately we have NADH2 ultimately we have FADH2 that are going to pass the electron ultimately that will be accepted by oxygen so these complexes are arranged in the inner mitochondrial membrane you can see one more diagram you can understand it in a better way right this is the diagram to make it clear for you complex 1 complex 2 complex 3 
complex 4 finally complex 5 this is the intermembrane space the space in between outer and inner membrane of mitochondria where proton gradient will be created where what is going to happen bache where proton gradient will be completed so these are protein complexes means they are made up of some proteins right so in between these proton complexes we have to pass the electrons and that energy will be used to move these h positive to the intermembrane space and finally atp formation will be there okay so when you talk about these complexes when you talk about the movement of electron it is always from a complex having low reduction potential okay to a complex having high reduction potential i hope you are aware of it okay now let's say complex one is passing the electron to three one is having low reduction potential three is having more when three is passing the electron to four three is having lower redux uh, reduction potential four is having more so always electrons will flow in a unidirectional way this is the one thing that you have to remember second thing is the root students if you understand this part it is basically the gist of this topic it is basically the crux there are two roots of electron transport in this electron transport chain in this electron transport chain you will talk about four complexes and you will talk about two mobile movable electron carrier why am i calling them as movable or mobile electron carrier because they are not fixed they will they have that mobility now root one your nadh2 and your fadh2 they are like yeah we cannot just follow the same route we have to follow the different route so nadh2 will pass your electrons to complex one complex one will pass it to complex three but how through this mobile electron carrier which is your ubiquinon right which is your ubiquinon in some books maybe it is represented as coq also but yes we have to follow the ncrt then complex three will pass the electron to complex four through the cytochrome c which is again a mobile electron carrier and finally to the oxygen this is the one thing that you have to remember if you remember this everything will be easy for you root one is saying that nadh2 has to pass the complex two uh, has to pass the electrons to complex one then to complex three then to complex four so when one one two three elect in between mobile electron carrier is ubiquinol complex three to four mobile electron carrier is cytochrome c finally oxygen now your in the case of your root two fadh2 fadh2 will pass the electron to complex two then three then four so one three four two three four understand it this can solve your questions one thing now the another part here complex one is made up of this fm and fes even in ncrt if you will relate please open the ncrt please open your book you will see in complex one this is what they have mentioned fm and fes okay complex three is made up of cytochrome b fes cytochrome c1 b first c1 b first c1 like this now complex four which is having two copper centers as well again it's a previous year question you can just check the questions but so it is having cytochrome a a3 finally oxygen come to complex 2 but it is succinate dehydrogenase so if you remember it links the crab cycle to electron transport chain it is an enzyme which was catalyzing the step succinate to fumarate in the crab cycle okay in the crab cycle okay so it will pass to complex 2 again when complex 2 will pass pass the electron to complex 3 again the mobile electron carrier is ubiquinol complex 3 to complex 4 cytochrome c finally oxygen now your complex 2 is made up of fad fes 3 1 is having fm and fes 2 is having fad fes these are the points that you need to notice that's all that's it right you need to remember these roots now you must be thinking then ma'am then let me tell you about the proton movement this diagram will clarify it right this is for the nadh2 you see one three four this is for the fadh2 you see complex two three four one two three ubiquinol three two four cytochrome c what are they mobile electron carrier two two three ubiquinol three two four cytochrome c what are they mobile electron carrier now in the nadh2 what you have to understand that when it is passing the complex one 
the electron protons will also pumped in intermembrane space it will pump 4h positive i know you want to know the reason there are many it is also to maintain that redox potential right but that is too deep and as of now i'll suggest you to remember this in this sequence you will answer all the question for me for your neat paper so 4h positive 4h positive right bache and then 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 when you talk about the complex 3 complex 3 will pump out 4h positive when you talk about the complex 4 it will pump out 2h positive so if you remember the sequence 1 3 4 1 will pump 4h positive 3 will pump 4h positive 4 will pump 2H positive. Understood? So now you can see when you talk about the NADH2, NADH2, it is pumping how many protons? 10H positive. It is pumping how many proton? 10H positive. When you are coming to FADH2, complex 2, succinate dehydrogenase, it is more towards the metric side, so it will not pump any proton. These are the points that you need to notice. It is covering all the points from NCRT. Complex 3 will again push 4, 4H positive. Complex 4 will again send 2H positive. And why complex 4 is giving 2H uh, positive outside? Because the another 2H positive will be accepted by your oxygen, which is the terminal electron and the proton acceptor, and the water will form. That is why. So, NADH2, 10 protons, you can see higher. FADH2 will give 6 protons, right? This is what your electron transport chain is. This is what your electron transport chain is, which we have covered in less than 10 minutes. But, but, here also, I will also explain oxidative phosphorylation. So, when you look at the oxidative phosphorylation, ATP synthase. What's the meaning here? Guys, it's very simple. See this mitochondria. Have a look of this mitochondria. Outer membrane, inner membrane, in between intermembrane space, where you have more protons. Matrix is having less protons. So, these protons will come from your ATP synthase and they form ATP, right? They form ATP and you know that, right? F0 will be inserted here. F1, head and stock will be in the matrix. Now, I am going to answer your confusion. You know that in the NCERT, in the NCERT, 4H positive is written. That 4H positive, when they will move from ATP synthase, you will get one ATP. I hope it is clear to you all. But in the image, they have still given the 2H positive. Now, how to differentiate it, how to manage it? Let me tell you, 4H positive is the correct thing. In the diagram, it is incorrect. Here, it should be 4H positive. Let me explain you how. See, I told you that NADH2 is going to it has formed for has sent 10h positive in intermembrane space so 4h positive will form one atp another 4h positive will form one atp and because we are left with only 2h positive it will form 0.5 atp so total how many atp will be there 2.5 atp 2.5 atp so one nadh2 is giving you 2.5 atp this is the logic this is the logic. Now, what about FADH2? I told you FADH2 is going to pump six protons. So, four protons will give you one ATP and other two protons will give you 0.5 ATP. So, FADH2 will give you 1.5 ATP and that is the actual concept. No doubt in NCRT, they mentioned three here. They mentioned two here, but that is the actual concept. So, even if in paper you are getting something like this, you can follow the actual concept because even if you will check the papers of last year NTA has uh, in her, the answer key when people they challenge it so NTA accepted the correct logic so this is it so I hope all your confusion is clear watch this video again and again and in the comment section do let me know you liked it or not because that even motivates me to make more such videos right but and this is something very amazing for you right it's a limited time deal because we have seen the students they want to join the Academy plus subscription but yeah results are not out right they are also skeptical so they want us to increase the duration as well for this amazing course so in the description box you people will see a link click on that link bache click on that link you can use the coupon code ambika 10 and you can get the unacademy plus subscription just at 54999 so there is a batch for class 11 student nimbus batch and that too in english
that too in english students right bachche our complete team our unacademy lead english team is going to teach you here so you are going to see the quality content you are going to see that enthusiastic attitude by your teachers and there will be test series revision practice everything will be there so nimbus batch class 11th nexus batch class 12th phoenix batch is for the droppers so do let me know in the comment section you enjoyed the etc or not and after watching this video do solve the pyqs you will answer all of them right take care stay tuned we'll post more such videos thank you students